In this video, I'm going to try to teach you the fundamentals of blueprints in Unreal Engine 4. It's a vast topic and it could take a thousand videos. So I'm just going to try to keep things as basic as I can in this first video. And this video is intended for people who have never done anything in blueprint. So maybe you just watch my Unreal Engine for beginners tutorial. And then now you're, you want to learn about blueprint. That's what this video is about. So I'm in this third person project here. And the first question you might have is what is blueprint? It's not the easiest to describe. One way to describe it is it's just a bunch of classes. So if you right click here in the content browser, you can create a basic blueprint class here. And these are all the different classes that Unreal Engine has. If you, if you click this drop down, then you can see every single class that the engine has for you. Now, when we select these classes and we make them in our project here, they're considered blueprint classes because we're making them in the engine. So for example, if I wanted to make a, another character, I would click this character right here. And as you can see right here, it says this character is a type of pawn. Well, right above it here is pawn. And then pawn says it's an actor. So right above the pawn, you see actor. So what you're seeing is this inheritance where the actor is the most basic class. And then you have a pawn, which is a type of actor. And then you have a character, which is a type of pawn. So the character actually builds off of the pawn, which builds off of the actor. Now, if you look down here in the all classes here, this object class is actually the most basic class in the engine. It says right here, the direct base class for all Unreal Engine 4 objects. So if you expand that, then you see actor, and this is basically like the second most basic class. So when you're building games in Unreal Engine, you're gonna be using a lot of these actor blueprints right here, as well as characters. And occasionally you'll use pawn and player controller but actor and character are gonna be your most common classes in my opinion. So actor, for example, I just made it right here. Let's just call this a door, right? So an actor can be anything. As I said, it's a base class. So I just call this a door. So let's open up our door blueprint here. And this is what you'll most likely be presented with. This is just an empty actor. Well, let's just go left to right here. So in the top left, these are our components. This is where we can add components. So right here, you get your common components. So you can add like a cube, for example. And now right here is this compile button. Anytime you make changes to your blueprint class, you're gonna to wanna to click compile. And then you'll often click save right afterwards. So one of the best tips I can give you is to save often. Compile and save all the time. So let's say you added this cube here. And now you wanna put this blueprint into your level. The way you would do this is you would click this magnifying glass that takes you right to your object here that you were in. You can drag it into the level and drop it in. And now we can move it around. But there's really nothing special going on with it. It's just a cube. If you're going to make a blueprint class that basic, you might as well just come over here, type in cube, and just add a cube in this way. So if you're going to work with a blueprint class, you should probably be doing more things than just adding a mesh into it. So that's where this event graph comes into play. And this is where you do programming. So if you've never programmed before, that's obviously a topic that could take 58 hours to explain. So let's just try to keep things really basic, high level, and just I'll just give you some tips from my experience. So number one, I will say that learning how to debug and find problems is gonna be the most important skill when it comes to Blueprint. And the reason for that is because even if you're good at Blueprint and programming in general, you're still gonna run into issues and finding those problems is gonna be the majority of your work. But let's just keep things really simple. So this begin play, so this event begin play, anything you do off of this is going to fire anytime a level loads. And what I mean by that is when I click this play button and I start playing, this is the beginning of the game. Assume the level just loaded and the player is now in it and moving around. Every single blueprint class that you have in your level, anything that is running off of begin play in that specific class will fire. So the very first node that you might want to learn here is called print string. Just type in print here and then you can get it. I am a cube. Yes. Okay, so I made some changes in the event graph here, so I'm going to click compile. And now in the top left corner when I play, you're going to see that message. I am a cube, yes. So that message got displayed because this begin play node got fired. So this is the most basic function or whatever you want to call it that you can ever do. This is basically like hello world. It's the very first function you ever learn when you program. But let's expand this print string here. 
When we expand this, if you hover over these things, this says string, this says Boolean, this says a linear color structure, and then this says float. These are all values that we can actually manipulate. And so a really handy trick here is you can actually right click these values and promote these to a variable. So when I do this, I get this new string variable because that's what this is, right? It's a string and I created a variable from it. And on the left hand side over here, it automatically added the variable. So now I can either click this variable to rename it, or I can press F2. And let's just call this our, let's be a good programmer and say our beginning message, right? This is the very first message that's going to fire. And so instead of typing it in the print string here, we can now over here in the details panel, this is where we would type it. So now we can say, my cube is stronger than yours. We can compile and save. And now when we play, it's going to say that message. So there you go. And now the message only lasts for two seconds. You can see it says two seconds right here. Obviously you could just type in 10, but then that's not teaching you much about the basics of blueprint. Why don't we right click this and promote it to a variable. And now we can call this the message time. So now we get this variable over here. It's a float. Let's compile first. And now we can adjust the time of this message. How long do we want it to last for? Well, let's say we want it to last for like 20 seconds. So I'm going to put 20. I'm going to compile. And, and now when I play, this message is going to stay here for 20 seconds. Okay, we're not going to watch it the whole time though. So now we have two variables here. We have a string variable, which honestly you won't use often. I never use these variables ever. But float, you're going to use these all the time. And then this right here, print to string, this is a Boolean, it's red. So if you right click this, let's make it a variable. We'll call this print to string with a question mark. And if you don't know what a Boolean is, it's basically a true or false. Well, another nice tip here is if you hold down the alt key and click, it disconnects it. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the beginning. I'm going to drag off this. I'm going to type in branch. And now you get this branch node. Now these branch nodes you're going to use with your Booleans all the time. So you connect that up. And now what we can say here is if this print to string is true, let's do something over here. Let's do a print string. For example, we can say, yes, I am true. And then maybe we want the color here to be like red, right? Orange. And now down here on the false, we can do another print string. We'll say, no, I'm not true because I suck. Make that one, you know, yellow or something. So now we can just decide whether it's true or false. So we can just check this as true. And now we can play. And so it says, yes, I'm true. And now if we turn it off and play, it says, no, I'm not true because I suck. So this branch node and these Booleans, you're going to use Booleans and branch nodes all the time during your gameplay logic. Maybe the player doesn't have enough stamina to sprint. So you want to check that. Does the player have enough stamina to sprint? If he does, then sprint. If he doesn't, you can't sprint. And a handy tip is to just hold down the B key, click, and you get a branch node. Put them all over the place. You're going to use these all the time, so remember that shortcut. Now I know I called this blueprint a door, but we're not doing anything that's door worthy with it. But if you do want to know how to make a door, I do have a tutorial on that. So you can just check the description and there's a link to it. It is for multiplayer though, so it's not the most beginner friendly tutorial. As a beginner, you really want to focus on just learning really like the shortcuts and what variables do, things like that. So over here, you can always add a variable and then you can go over here to the variable type and you can select what you want your variable to be. But most of the time when I make variables, I'll either be making a Boolean or I'll have a certain situation where I'll make variables off of the function. Like here, for example, I made the variable off of this string. Let's just do an example here. Let's say we wanted to spawn an actor, right? So you get this spawn actor from class. So on begin play, we want this door to spawn something. It's asking for a class and what it's really asking for is a blueprint class. 
So that means I might have to come over here and create a new blueprint class. Let's create a, another actor. Let's just call this a ball, right? We'll keep it really simple and we'll just come up here and we'll add a sphere. Just gonna compile it, save it and close it. And now back in our door blueprint here, let's now just type in ball. And there's ball, this is the class that we just made. So we're basically saying on begin play, we want to spawn this ball and then this transform. So what exactly is a transform? So if you come into the level here, any object you click, you'll see this transform over here on the right. So transform is the location, rotation, and scale. So this character's transform, for example, has a location of XYZ. It has a rotation of 000 and a scale of 111. That's a transform. But with these transforms, you can also right click and you can split it and maybe you just only want to get the location or the rotation or the scale. Maybe you only want one of them, right? So that's what's really cool about a transform is you can split it, but then you can also recombine it. Now there's a lot more to Blueprint. It's a very complex system. It's not as beginner friendly as some would like you to think it is. Just it does take a lot of practice and repetition. Go through as many tutorials as you can, take courses, things like that, just to get familiar. So for example, we were talking about transform here. Where do we want to spawn it? And the reason why we can't compile is because it wants a transform here. It's asking us where we want to spawn the ball. Let's select this reflection capture here. Let's say you want to spawn an actor at this exact location when the game starts. All I really care about is the location. I don't really care about the rotation. It's 0, 0, 0. I don't care about the scale. It's 1, 1, 1. So what I can do here is I'm actually going to split this again. And so 0, 0, 0 for the rotation, 1, 1, 1 for the scale. That's good. But for the location, we want minus 16, minus 80, 512. So I can type in minus 16, minus 80, 512. Now if I compile, it says it's okay. And now when I play, there's a ball in the sky. How cool is that? Now this character is a blueprint as well. So this character comes with the third person project here. So when you select it, you can actually come over here in the world outliner and click edit third person character. And it actually opens up his blueprint class. So now this is a very basic character. You can't get any more basic than this. So I encourage you to open it up and just try to understand what's going on here. This is all just movement. That's all this character does is just moves around. So we have this move forward, move right. This mouse input is turn and look up. And then this jump makes the character jump. And now this function automatically comes with the character class. Epic has been nice enough to create this class in the engine. But still, this might seem very foreign to you if you're brand new. So what exactly is this move forward? This is called an input axis. And to make this easier to explain, I'm going to go up to edit and then project settings. And then we have input on the left. We have our axis mappings and our action mappings. So an action mapping is more of an action, like you press the mouse button and you fire a weapon or you press space and you jump, right? So if you click this arrow, you can see it says space bar. So I'm gonna add one and let's just do fire. And now I'm gonna type in left mouse and you get left mouse button. So it automatically saves. And if I come back into the third person character here to add that new action mapping, if I right click and then type in fire, I now have this action event. So this action event is what we just made here in the input. So what this is saying is anytime I press the left mouse button, it's going to do anything. So let's just do our print string again. Let's make this red or orange, whatever. And you can just say fire. So now I compile and when I play, every time I left click, it's saying fire. So now this is how you would set up some very basic shooting with the left mouse button. You'd set up the input here and then every time the player presses the left mouse button, you would fire a weapon. But that's a topic for another day. What I would recommend you do is if you're trying to set up a character, you can just take this movement stuff here. You can just copy it. 
You can select everything, copy it, and then I can come into door, for example, and paste it. And that's what's really cool about Blueprint. You can just copy functions around and events and things like that. And then you can also make your own events. So for example, what we right click, type in custom, and you get this add custom event. Let's click that. And we'll say, turn on physics, for example. And we're actually working with the door here. So when I play, the door just floats. But with the door selected, I can actually, I can actually select the cube here. And if I scroll down, I can actually turn on physics like this. And when I play, the cube falls to the ground, right? But let's say we don't want to do it this way. Let's say you have a, a, like 100 cubes in your level or whatever. You don't want to go through each cube and, and manually turn this on. So what we're going to do here is on begin play, we're not going to spawn the ball. So I'm just going to hold down alt and disconnect it. We're going to turn on physics, but we're going to turn on physics after three seconds. We're going to wait three seconds and then turn on physics and make the cube fall to the floor. So to do that, here's a, another node that's going to be really common. So you just type in delay, you get this delay. So this function is really common. You're going to use it a lot. Let's say we want to delay for three seconds. So we start the game, begin play fires. It's going to hit this delay. And after three seconds, it's going to do whatever we tell it to do here. So let's say we want to call this turn on physics event right here. I'm going to drag off this, type in turn on physics. So now if I double click this, it takes us right to the event. Very handy shortcut to get to where you want to go. So after three seconds, it calls this function. And anything we do here is now going to fire. So let's select the cube up here. I can hold down and drag it into the editor here. And now if you have the cube selected, most of these things on the right hand side over here in the details, these are things that you can actually edit in the blueprint graph. So for example, I was turning on physics, right? Well, I could actually do that here. I can drag off this and let's just type in simulate physics. And you get set simulate physics. And now we want to turn it on. So with this cube, you have to actually select up here. I'm literally just turning this on through code. Now, same with this gravity, I could turn it off if I wanted to. So I could drag off this and type in gravity, and then we get set enable gravity. And if I keep this unchecked, we're actually setting it to false. So it's true by default, but if I connect this up and play, this is actually gonna turn off now. But I don't wanna do that. I want to simulate physics so you can see it fall after three seconds. So let's play. And there it goes, three seconds later. Cool. Now let's come to the viewport here. We can also add other things up here. I can add like a light, for example. Let's drag it up here. Let's make the light, the color, or like a red. And then out here, you can actually see it's just red up there now. So I'm just showing you, you can, you can add lights and stuff to blueprints. And then again, if I drag this light out here, all of these values you see in the details panel, I can edit these in the graph. So I can go intensity, and then you get set intensity. So now I can change that number. By default, it's 5,000, but I could set it to whatever I want now. So that's really handy. Just when you add a component, so just look over here on the right-hand side, see which things you might want to adjust. Most of the time you won't do things like that, but there are situations where you'll want to simulate physics, for example, or maybe you'll want to turn off physics. But this is just an example. I'm just trying to help you get comfortable working in Blueprint. It's a complex system. There's so much to it. What you're going to want to do now going forward is just, I would encourage you to check out my top-down shooter video. We're going to make a top-down shooter in one and a half hours or something like that. We use a lot of Blueprint. It's all Blueprint. And you'll also make some AI and shooting a weapon. So that would be the next step that I would take if I were you, just to dive into the engine and get familiar with Blueprint. And repetition is how you build the skill. The more you work in Blueprint and do things, the more your brain's just going to start remembering things and picking things up, just like any other skill. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button and go check out my top-down shooter. And I will catch you on the other side.